My name is David Dunningham. I am a solutions consultant for Glidefast Consulting, and I'm a past IT change manager. And today I'm going to share with you two of my favorite queries for filtering or operators, if you will, for filtering change requests, which can be extended to any other table. So this first operator I'm going to talk about is the is one of operator. This allows you to make a list of examples here, change numbers that you can work on to filter out a quick list if somebody has just sent you a list of change numbers or an Excel sheet of change numbers. You can grab the whole list and place it in the data field, the input value field of the number field in this case. And when you run that, it will filter your list of so many to whatever numbers you have in the list and in the order that you have placed them in. This can also be used for other fields as well. If I expand this out and I change this field from number to state, I can go state and still use the is one of. In this case, because it's a choice list, it gives me items I can pick. So for example, if I'm looking for changes that are pending approval, I can pick the assess and authorize phases and when I hit run there, I get a list of, and I'll go ahead and group by state so that you can see that both assess and authorize are present there. So that is the first of the two operators that I found to be very useful as a change manager. The second operator that I found useful is the relative operator on date fields. So for example, here on, let me set this to active is true and add an and, and if I go to land start date, I can actually use a relative operator to allow you to say after and then the after or before is the first piece, then I can do a numeric and I can say two and I can use relative time frame here. So I can say two hours ago or I can go from now. So plan start date. Let's say I'm going to look at changes and I'm just going to say half a half a shift four hours from now. And then I can say and I can do this also again for planned end date. And I can say relative again here. And in this case, I can say before eight hours from now. So this will give me all change requests that have a planned start date four hours from now and a planned end date before eight hours from now. So the so basically the second half of the day, if I was running this at the beginning of the day. I'm probably not going to find any here, but this is this is a really nice way to do things. I would actually use this query to help me find changes within certain time frames, because I could actually change this to four days from now and say eight days from now. So that would give me, you know, changes for next week, so to speak. If I had a need, maybe we had an upcoming window coming up and I didn't want to use hard dates. I could use relative dates from there to go through this. I'll run this to see what happens. In this case, I don't think I have any changes in that range. But if I did, if I change this to a go and I'm going to say after four days ago and actually I'm going to do I'm going to change these numbers here so I'm going to say after eight days ago instead of days I'm going to go months and then I'm going to say six months ago in here and we can run that and again didn't find anything in that range just because i'm using sample data in a pdi let's change this from 
eight years ago to six months ago. And then I have some I have some data in here now that's pulling back changes. It's pulling back 75 of the 95 changes so that they fall within that within that window. And again, I can I can play with this number. And so if I go one year ago, one years ago and say two years ago, let's do that. That's a much shorter window. So basically changes from the last from a year ago to two years ago. Again, 73 changes in here, but using that plan start date to planned end date being in that window. So those are two operators that you can use to help you filter down your lists and see the data that you're wanting to look at.